Rafe Badawi is now one of the most famous political prisoners in the world, and that's in part due to an accident. Two days after he was publicly flogged in January, receiving the first 50 of a thousand lashes, the Saudi ambassador to France joined the march for free speech in Paris, protesting against the shocking Charlie Hebdo murders. The gap between Saudi Arabia's apparent support for free speech on the streets of Paris and its savage treatment of anyone who speaks out back home led to an un, unsurprising outcry and has ensured that Rafe has not been forgotten and will not be forgotten. You can join English Pen on a special vigil on Friday morning at nine o'clock outside the embassy, marking nine months since Rafe was first flogged. We're calling for the release of Rafe's lawyer as well, the leading human rights activist, Walid Abel Khair, who is serving a sentence of 15 years. If you'd like to do more, you can also support a judicial review of the UK's bid to sell its prison services to the Saudi government, which Jimmy Wales just spoke about, a commercial deal. And the judicial review is being brought by a very small charity that is also part of the coalition that Jimmy Wales' foundation is part of in English Pen, the we, the we Are Rafe Coalition. The charity is called the Gulf Centre for Human Rights. It's that gap between what governments say about free speech and how far they are really prepared to go to defend it that remains a significant test of the health of any democracy. Turkey's Prime Minister was also on that demonstration. Yesterday, English Pen welcomed the leading Turkish investigative journalist, Ahmet Shuk, to London. He's had to leave Turkey as it's currently too dangerous for him to work there. And I'm very pleased to welcome him here tonight. The media in Turkey is now literally under assault. Last week, the journalist Ahmet Hakan was beaten up outside his home. The newspaper Hurriyet's offices have been attacked twice by a mob following speeches by the president criticizing the newspaper's coverage. And last month, three journalists working for Vice News in southeast Turkey were detained on the basis accusation of working on behalf of a terrorist organization. One member of the team, Mohammed Ismail Rasul, still remains in prison, and we need your support to campaign for his release, as well as to keep up the pressure on the Turkish government at a time of extreme crisis for freedom of expression in the country. And some of you will remember that there was a very famous visit that Harold Pinter made with Arthur Miller in 1985, where he said later that the, one of the proudest moments of his life was when he and Arthur Miller were thrown out of the US Embassy for um, daring to accuse the American government of collusion in Turkey. Some of you will have seen yesterday that the EU is now asking Turkey for help to stop refugees and migrants from entering Europe. Turkey is asking the EU in return to turn a blind eye to its human rights record by designating it a safe third country. So we have to be looking very closely at our own backyard too and question how far we're also prepared to sacrifice civil liberties for political gain or for security. Most of us here tonight are fortunate enough not to live under the same pressures as journalists in Turkey or Mexico or bloggers in Saudi Arabia or Bangladesh, where, as I'm sure you know, there's been a horrifying series of murders. But there is a deterioration taking place in this country as well. And I just want to give you one example of a very recent trend that, that seems to be escalating. And that's the impact of the government's policy to tackle extremism, an impact that we can see on artistic expression and open debate. And there have been numerous incidents at universities, um, other institutions, and in, in artistic institutions as well. Just two examples. First, a play um, that was going to be uh, shown by the National Youth Theatre exploring extremism. It was cancelled after pressure from the police and the local authority. And a more recent case um, that was reported in The Guardian a week ago, an artwork by the artist Mimsy that satirized ISIS 
was censored at an exhibition. And it actually uh, represented ISIS um, as fluffy toys in black balaclavas, threatening bunnies having picnics. And uh, the police deemed it a risk to public safety. So the picture was removed from the exhibition. It takes very little to provoke fear, uncertainty, and moral panic. And free speech is often the first casualty because it's not an absolute freedom and it easily falls victim to the political climate. I'd like to thank everyone here who supported us so generously over the past year with donations or pro bono expertise or by working with us on our campaigns and programs. We're going to need your support more than ever over the months to come. Not only will there be further legislation on extremism, but a bill that is expected to extend the powers of the intelligence services to collect our data will also be passing through Parliament this autumn, and both are likely to have a significant impact on our freedom to speak, our freedom to communicate, and our freedom to create. So if you're not already a member of English Pen, you have an opportunity to join tonight. It's the solidarity that you've seen here this evening between writers and activists that is the spirit of the Pen Pinter Prize, and it's the heart of what we do at Pen. I'd like to finish by paying tribute to a very great supporter of English Pen who was one of the founders of the Pen Pinter Prize, the writer and biographer Carol Seymour Jones, who died very sadly earlier this year. She was a former chair of the Writers in Prison Committee and campaigned tirelessly for writers at risk around the world. And she was also a deputy president of English Pen. And there's going to be a memorial service for her at St Bride's on the 15th of October. And it'd be wonderful if you were able to come. These are her words. Sometimes a case seems hopeless, particularly in the cluster of countries that still use long-term imprisonment as a means of censorship. But Penn never loses hope that the oxygen of publicity may bring about release, however long it takes, as well as providing psychological support to prisoners. Congratulations to James Fenton. Thank you to all of you for coming tonight. <laughs>